Good evening, and welcome back to the CFDA Fashion Awards. This evening is indeed a celebration. We at the CFDA created a common thread with Vogue. And the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund returned this year as well, with half a million dollars in mentorships for 10 finalists. There's so many reasons to feel proud. Daniel Day, better known as Dapper Dan, is one of the most inspiring and influential designers of our era. Dapper Dan came to understand what he calls the power of symbols. And when he opened his boutique in Harlem, he put big prestigious logos on garments, even cars. These were symbols of status and power. As he said, I got everyone running around Gucci, Louis, Fendi. Luxury brands began to file lawsuits against him. After his Harlem store was raided, Dapp was forced to shutter his business and reinvent himself. For too long, the fashion system has excluded black people while appropriating black culture. Today, everyone in fashion needs to support the change that Dapper Dan represents. I can think of no one who deserves the Jeffrey Bean Lifetime Achievement Award more than Dapper Dan. Be sure. People used to buy bags and cut the bags up and put it on their clothes. They come in wanting to know what What's in? Now, what's passe? Louis Vuitton is passe. Uh, Gucci is back in. Uh, Fendi is in. So most of the people, they'll, they'll be interested in those type of things. But what's mostly in is, like I say, is statement clothing. talk about how this really went down. I wanted to open up a store because I like luxury clothes, I like expensive stuff, and cater to the people who I knew in the community, the hustle element, the criminal element, and sell those type of things. And then I knew all the major gangsters. Jack Jackson was the biggest drug dealer to come along in Harlem after Nicky Barnes, the symbols. So I said, you know what? If I can make garments out of those symbols, I can have a huge impact. So after I taught myself textile printing, that opened up a whole new window for me. What I did was I would make reversible fur coats. One side would be fur, and the other side might be Louis Vuitton or Gucci or Fendi. And that's when it just mushroomed into it even bigger than what I was in the beginning. The rappers like to be around the gangsters and like to look like the gangsters and dress like the gangsters. So eventually, as the rap music started to take off, the rappers started to make more money than the gangsters because all the gangsters was going to jail as rap music was exploding. Diane Dixon was an Olympic track star who had won gold medals and she used to come to the store all the time. But she was different. She was way ahead of her time with what she wanted. And she had this idea, she said, Dap, I want you to make me something really special. I said, okay, what you want to look like? She said, I just wanted to look high fashion, right? So we came up with this concept that she would have these balloon sleeves. So I went and got that material and I blew the arms up and I used mahogany fur and then I used a butter soft Louis Vuitton and then put the material out to give it that effect. And it worked out amazing. And finding out where this was coming from and that's when the raid started. MCM, Fendi, and Louis Vuitton. Gucci never raided me. It was those three basically. They would come in with a cease and desist order, meaning that they could take any garments that they saw that had their logos on it. And I was losing a lot of money. They kept raiding me, raiding me, raiding me. But I would keep building right back up. And one day, Fendi came to raid me. If I go to jail again, I'm going under the bed. Act like you gon' pull that thing thing. You the one that always gets stuck for bling bling. I represent A Block and Sing Sing. Almost caught a buck fifty for coming from the Latin Kings Queen. All of a sudden, everything came to an end. I refused to give up. I regrouped myself, found me an underground place where I could continue to make clothes and start it all over again. 
And that's how I sustained myself for 20 years underground. I was the best kept secret. In 2017, life changed for me. All of a sudden, one of my creations popped up on the Gucci runway. It was the same Diane Dixon look that I had did 30 years earlier. I was used to white folks taking stuff from us. That was a given, you know? Next thing I know, my son told me, they want to get in touch with you. They want to be in the partnership. So I told my son, I said, if they serious, I said, tell them to come to Harlem. And they came. The Gucci deal involved that they would set me up, make it possible for me to work the same way I worked when I initially started out 30 years ago. But the only difference this time, I would be working with only Gucci fabrication. So now my real freedom is coming. This is gonna be the biggest stage of my life. So I want my legacy to be that I did something to make that happen. style. It had customers. And it had money, especially from the gangsters. So Dan innovated a whole new look from whole cloth, buying up Gucci bags and luggage for the logo, sewing it onto newly tailored clothes and marketing that as a new street style, a remix of downtown luxury, uptown. In Louis Vuitton logos, the same look favored as you see here by the rappers, the Fat Boys or rapper LL Cool J wearing a tracksuit covered in those logos. Stars ranging from Beyonce to Selma Hayek would go on to rock Dan's signature style. And Dan's Harlem shop grew from the attention. While his customers paid extra for the Dapper Dan look, they knew they weren't buying a Gucci product, just like Andy Warhol's fans knew he was making art, not soup ads. Dan had many customers and artists on his side, and most culture echoes something. Picasso joked bad artists copy and mature artists steal. He openly remixed other artists like you see here, Velazquez. But the fashion houses had money and power on their side. And they ran Dan's shop out of business. has been so incredible. Tom, thank you so much. I can't tell you enough of how important this is to people of color to have this night. <laughs> I was at Gucci before Marco was at Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm walking the red carpet with Marco. I'm at the Grammys with Marco, and tonight I'm sitting with Marco. Thank all of you, thank you so much. You know? Thank you so much.